Mama Helen and Jill. Mama Helen and Jill. Mama Helen and Jill. Mama Helen and Jill. You can't even imagine how I feel right now. Do you know why? Because of the special edition we have for you. All the way from Wari, Nigeria, there's a still Mama <laughs> when I had this. This is called the title. Are you serious? Yes. Thank you for getting your name to that. That's awesome. Yeah. That's Nigeria for you. We are very colorful, very creative, yeah. and then of course, happy people. Yes. Now, today we're going to be looking at the word independence. Yeah. What does it mean? The word independence. Independence stands for a lot of things. The simplest understanding of it is freedom. Uh, freedom, maturity, independence is a word that talks about the ability of a people, a nation, to be the one to determine how they should go, what they should do, to determine their fate. It becomes a very important word considering the fact that Nigeria is a creation of the British. For a very long time, Nigeria was under colonial rule, and at a point, the people of this nation felt that they have come of age, that they have what it takes to manage their own affairs, and through agitation, uh, unlike some other countries that had to fight wars of independence, our wars gotten on a platter of gold because we have to negotiate the exit of the British colonial master. And so, giving us the freedom to be the architect of our destiny is what independence stands for. Beautiful. Awesome. 
If you thought that at 56, how would you with Nigeria? You haven't experienced the word independence, as, as it were. I mean, I'll put it this way. My father told me that in a race, there's a starting point and an end point. When you leave the starting point, you may not always have gotten to the end point. But when you look behind, you'll find out that you're no longer on the starting point. So I think Nigeria is on a race. Ooh, I love that. Nigeria is on a race. But I would want to also ask this question. I mean, at what age is it expected of an individual to have been able to take the battle by it. Some person save life begins at 40. Nigeria is now 56. <laughs> so one would have expected that we shouldn't be crawling now. We should have been walking, not just walking, but walking at all. And what, yes, and what makes it so painful for those who are very emotional about this is that God is awesome. God gave us all that we need to be who we should be. But somewhere along the line, we lost it. That's the challenge of independence. You know, some person said we are not matured enough to ask for that freedom in the first place. Some have said probably because he came on a plateau of gold, so we didn't value it. Some people thought, look at a country like South Africa, until lately they were still under apartheid regime. And when you go there, you won't believe that these are people who were under domination and bondage. Nigeria had no excuse for the state that we are. But it's very, very unfortunate, as I said. I don't want to be emotional about it because as a political scientist and one who is conversant with what is happening all over the world, I know that it is not peculiar to our country. I know that in present generation, a lot of countries are going through trials, through tribulations. The only difference is that those people have issues. We ought not to be having this because we are so abundantly blessed, not only in terms of resources, Human capital. This we have not exploited, and that's why we find ourselves in this sorry situation. So, coming back to your simple question, we should be working toward not. But that doesn't remove the fact that we are still on a race, as I said before. Well, fine. Thank you. Well, looking at the word being on the race and then of the stage of flying. Yeah. Uh, in the British system, yeah. it is expected that once you are 17 of age, you should have been able to have, to have some of independence. Yes. In other words, it's expected of you to possibly leave your parents' house and rent an apartment of yours. Or even if you're going to be siding with your parents still, it is expected that you contribute, you know, at what point um, to the economy of the family. Now, in Nigeria's system, um, you still see a 30 year old man. Possibly living with daddy and mom. And calls himself youth. And still calling. <laughs> Even a 15 year old man says he's, he's one. So, I mean, how do you relate this? Is a reason why it, it, is, it should, should that be a reorientation of um, what it means to be independent and at the particular age where it is necessary? Because it is working for them over there. Yes. Why is it that a man at 40 calls himself as youth? Personalism, that's our problem. Our cultural orientation subjects us to look up to people and think that they have the responsibility to do everything for us. So we find out in some of our societies, even the responsibility of the parents to find a wife and start up a home for a man. You see that orientation, even in the modern age where we are, where everybody expects that government is responsible for everything. We've talked about the British. I remember an American president says, think not what you can do for your, what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. We don't take responsibilities. We think that there's somebody out there who should do it for us. That is the orientation. And that's because we don't start early. Uh, like you said, you have to look at it the other way. We have to begin to now bring up. Uh, then, you remember that when we started out, it was a very difficult thing to train children. Even at that point, the only orientation is for the male child. The woman child was neglected because we had this belief that the woman's place in the kitchen. In the kitchen. All of that has changed is today. That, is, is that we, true? Yes, women, okay. women are the highest the contributor. Yes, women are the highest contributors now, and everybody's having it. So the point is, what kind of orientation do you give to people? But you know, I've had to do a lot of challenges over time, and that's where we talk about when we talk about system of education. We seem to be a people. Remember, some time ago we spoke this on uh, this same channel. We were talking about the you know focus on paper qualification. 
train people for skills. Skill. Today, people are getting into skills, not because we are training them, but because challenges of life is causing them to look it's elsewhere. Awesome. Awesome. Which is all the more reason why we should not understand that it works and it should be the basis of our orientation. When you go to school, you do all the theoretical things, you come out, you don't get a job, you start hanging out on people. But today people know that nobody's going to feed you. Things are very, very difficult. So it does not matter. Of course, everybody needs to be educated. Education is not just job. Education is about orientation, preparing you for whatever role you're going to play in society. So I agree with you totally that we have come to that stage where what we have to give to people is functional education. Education that prepares them to be the master of their own destiny. To create things where they don't exist. People shouldn't be looking for job. People should be creating job and employing other people. If that is your orientation, I think they're going to move forward. Yeah. Awesome. You couldn't have said it better. Let me look at this word. Because it's very translated from one end of the world to the other. What people do is to create. And when you create, you get benefit for what you're creating. But that doesn't resist with you all over. Everybody wants to do it. Everybody wants to copy it. What the world is dealing with, we're dealing with a global economy. What differentiates the developed societies and us is that they are always breaking new grounds. They're always wanting to change things from the way they were. I was telling my little kid, so I remote control and say, Daddy, I want to watch Cartoon Network. And the teacher that I am always brings something like a picture of my man. And I was looking at my child and I told my child, do you know what television used to be like? For those of us who saw television when it came out, you know, it used to be like a very big box yeah. that you even had to open and close and uh, it has to be on black and white. And it starts making that much and you are watching even the color that is coming out there. But you want to change the channels, you are breaking up. Blue, 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 blue. And those days when you want to watch very late night program, your biggest challenge is how to turn the channels without mama here. And before you do it, there's a knock on your head. Yeah, Today, we see what it is that on your phone, you can assess the world. Now, the phone is this. They never rested. For everything they created, they want to make it perfect. They want to make it more functional. They want to make it easily accessible. The biggest challenge I have in my environment is that we rely so much on what people have done, what people have created, and we don't do anything. A Nigerian child wants to use a phone of 150,000 naira. Whereas the networks here don't even give anything more than text messages and phone calls. So more than 95% of the facilities in that phone is not being used. And you are so big and powerful and feeling so out of touch with reality and you are carrying that phone. So intellectually, we are not growing when there are challenges. So for realms, if we must grow, look at our economy, look at everything. I'm not as part of that, but you see, the global system, we are always playing the second field. Everything has added money, the way they say in Nigeria, right? Because everything has to do with dollar. So true. But how was the child here when dollar was less than Nigerian naira? So true. Nigerian naira was just equal to the British pound. So true. Where did we get it from? Point. Because the there is no point. intellectual development. So and so I think it's time for us to begin to create something of our own. That originality matters a lot. Well, people are actually young. Yeah. Every, every human being wants to experience. Positive, yes. but we're never ready to price for it. And yes. Nigeria ought to be only the better if we try doing that. Yes. And the other side minds will be looking at what we need to do to bring that meaningful change, impacting our economy, politically, and every other aspect of living. I'm a hell of you back in the moment.
a friend in Jesus, they will wipe your tears away. And if your heart is broken, all you got to do is lift your hands and say, said everybody desires change but truly not many people desire change it is one thing to desire change it is another to work for change and think the government was right when he said change begins with me change begins with you if you want change you must work for change 
I was so sad a few days ago, I heard the music being sung on the radio, uh, somebody was playing the music, and the really it was that when they were fighting corruption, we were eating. Now <laughs> that they are fighting corruption, we are not eating. And I was asking myself, has corruption now become a virtue that people should now sing in songs? A lot of things went bad because that's part of the fact of what we see as a people. We just don't practice it. Now, leadership is one thing. Followership is another. Societies you're talking about, people go into service, not political office for their own benefits. I get very, very irritated when I see political officers going to church or going to mosque to go and give thanksgiving and tell you they are so godly, they are this and that. Yet, they are the biggest problem that we have because if you know God... Would you then say that the political class yes, seems if, if, to be the bane of our problem? That is here? because it starts from the top. When a man is saying, I am godly, a man says he wants to give a virtue that he is a Christian, for instance, that person has to showcase some of those things that makes a Christian. Our leaders are not humble. Our leaders are not accountable to the people. Our leaders don't even understand the concept of leadership. They are lords over us. And so when you talk about change, how does change begin? When people are not receiving salary and budgets are being padded. When people are suffering and the man who says, I want to make your life better, is not even feeling your pulse. Governance is about humility. Governance is about accountability. Governance is about change. I have not seen it anywhere in these societies. If you look at the histories of people in the world, sometimes you have to push people. I don't care whether the leader is hard on the people. I want results. Because most of the societies where you've seen this result, at a point in time, they were not listening to people crying. They had a vision. Leadership is about managing resources and placing towards the goal. Awesome. What is the goal? Let me, let me, take, let me, let me have you take a pause there and mm. take you to the Western world a little yes. bit yes. and see how we can try to bring it back home. Yes. Kind of industrial revolution in the West. In Europe, yes. In Europe, for instance. Yes. I mean, what led to that? And is there a possibility of this country experiencing industrial? Our biggest challenge is non industrialization because we import everything. I'm not going to take your time. Let me just give you just a very little example. When I was growing up, I was going to the university, my elder brother works in Shell. My elder brother had a colleague who didn't have formal education in the way of some of them went to Shell training school and all of that. But he was so very good with machines, you know, good in children and all of that. And then you have the majority of management staff that were white. By the time this so-called nationalization and all of that were taking place, that man was living, he took this young boy who we all live in Anbasa here in Hawaii, yes. And then years later, they had an issue with a machine that they imported that couldn't work. They sent an expert to Nigeria to come and repair it. And behold, this young man from Abbasa that came. And by the time they saw him, they told the guy I just came into Nigeria and wanted to say hi. When the workers came and they started performing magic, everybody was shocked. Mm -hmm. You remember the Taiwan yeah. we over today? Who are the Asian giants? So true. Technology is not something we import. Technology is about creativeness. Sometimes on the social media, you see a young man who was able to design certain things. Nobody looks up to him. Nobody supports him. But he never claims this person. You see, they go to the SL. Let me give you another example. Four stars. People who can hack into government system, computers, or whatever. They go to a point. Government brought them together and said, look, you guys are using your skill for evil. Why not use it for good? So we're going to employ you. Start hacking into government fight. They want to bring something that cannot be penetrated. And Some of us say, well, one of the things that seem to be <coughs> mitigated yes. against our ability to, you, to revolutionize yes. the wise, yes. um, has to do with social amenities and answer for instance. The infrastructures. You yes. You need, um, you know, I mean, all those things yes. that could aid, uh, you know, the ability yes. to bring manufacturing. Yes. I mean, if you look at um, the Western world, for instance, for instance, like Europe, uh, like Haleo mentioned, they have all these things in place. It's so 
No one can actually say, well, I can have a mini factory and produce X, Y, Z. I mean, we run a school out there to, to, to run a generator and keep light on goes, we spend sometimes close to half a year, a month. Now, how do you cope? You know, I mean, <laughs> balancing your overall revenue income with a salary, with all sorts of all the things that has running in order to keep up the standard of the school. So when, when you look at all that, I mean, how does that really affect? You're right. You cannot, you, you cannot have industrialization. You cannot have industrialization without the infrastructures. It's not possible. But again, that brings the uniqueness of us as a people. How can the electricity work when some people are importing generators? And I've heard of this math. It's like, well, whatever you try to do, we'll, we'll sabotage you anyway. So that, so that, <laughs> is, a, that is a problem. Like in our petroleum sector, the engine that drives Nigeria economy, every year you hear about turnaround maintenance. Money is sunk into it. At the end of the day, nothing is done, nothing is maintained. So infrastructure has to do with, you know, when you have industrialization. You must have infrastructure. If you go to some of the countries you're talking about, they set out to make sure that it is. They set places where people can go and have everything. Those travel villages and all of that. Where everything that people need to work. So your creativeness can come. It's, that's why I was saying that there are a lot of Nigerians who have what it takes, but they are not encouraged. The facilities for them to work is not there. And so it just do the magic because we rely on what is imported. We import virtually everything. A lot of persons who drive cars in this country, when they can't pack them somewhere, they have to call somebody abroad to ask what needs to be done. It's not something you cannot transfer technology. You must have the facilities. You must what they call homegrown, something that agrees with your environment that you can manage. I don't know what's thing about saying this. So which way now? Yes, it's a long time ago. Go, I love my father, and yeah. so on. Yeah. Now, what, what, you can dwell on the negativity, but you know that where, where, where there are situations, you must also always provide solutions. Yes. Now, in the wake of that, how do we correct the um, abnormalities in Nigeria? How do we reposition ourselves, making ourselves a great nation that we ought to? Because we can't go on complaining like this. We know yes. for 56 years, or maybe, yes, yes. really, really, really. Because if, if someone says that the, the, the Nigerian problem started 10 years ago, it's, it's, not, it's not, not true. true. It's, it's, it goes way back to when we started as yes. a nation, as yeah. a country. So, I mean, how do we want right the wrong? You know, I mean, there are so many. But how do we start by correcting them? And in the middle way, we'll be drawing on how to make it right for this country, Nigeria. Back in a moment, Helen and you. Every one is held accountable to his action. When you are corrupt, you are dealt with such a way that nobody wants to be corrupt. But when you are corrupt here, we get people being being careful. We are giving chief time to so every occasion we don't recognize. Why would I not want to be corrupt? The man who does the right thing is the old man. And the white man simply said, you don't want to sell? So I will sell. And I said, but why are you saying that? That is off the mark. If you don't want to sell, I can go to another person. And I went to the next person. That man was using the to tell him, say, sell a half for a million. They don't get money. Then the woman now turned and said, hey, this one you don't have a money, they marry you, here with you, they talk. Mama Helen and Jew. Mama Helen and Jew. Mama Helen and Jew. Mama Helen.